Welcome back to the line table. The outgoing chancellor slash president of New Mexico State University, Gary Carruthers, will be replaced by a team of two who will earn a combined salary of more than twice that of Mr. Carruthers' base salary of $350,000 a year. Now, incoming Chancellor Dan Arvizu and incoming President John Floros will annually earn $500,000 and $450,000, respectively. And, Tom, the two are expected to reverse declining student enrollment. Regents say the pay rates are justified because they have to really turn this thing around. Nine fifty large is a big number. That's a big number. And we're, they're looking to turn around a lot of... Very difficult things, student enrollment, research grants, the, the numbers there. Mm -hmm. what's, your, what's your initial thought about the, the two-headed monster versus oh. the single well, <laughs> traditional? Ha having been part of the headed monsters before, <laughs> I can tell you it's all how you launch it. It was okay. not launched well. Ooh, wow. as, a part of the, uh, as a part of the interview process, the number one topic from faculty is what are you going to do to increase our salaries? Yes. And it's clear that the regents took advantage of a situation by doing president slash chancellor and went in perhaps uh, with their game plan already laid out that, you know what, we're going to hire two people right. uh, to basically, you know, cover a multitude of ills. Mm -hmm. uh, the only problem is everybody at NMSU is ill now as a result right. of this horrendous decision. Right. That's interesting. Now, what did they do wrong in the rollout specifically? Would you say they didn't quite do that they, well? Uh, they did not. Well, they should have had an event in Albuquerque. Albuquerque is their <laughs> weakest link okay. uh, because, you know, New Mexico State being positioned where they are in Las Cruces has the opportunity to, you know, play either to the El Paso market or to the Albuquerque market. Right. They ignored the Albuquerque market right. and uh, that's really one of their greatest weaknesses. As a result, mm -hmm. people don't know what the difference between a president and a chancellor are. Uh, you know, how are they going to divide the duties and not mm -hmm. but they also have this pretty impressive uh, bonus package uh, on top of all of that That's and right. nobody so it, the whole <laughs> rollout right. was so mismanaged it's really quite unfortunate because New Mexico State has a lot of positive things going for it right yep. now unfortunately leadership is not one of them. That's right. Andy interestingly enough there's a survey out there uh, the College and University Professional Association for Human Resources and there's a mouthful for that name but the 500,000 500, is not unusual for a research university do you know what I mean that's not that far out out of bounds. So is it in fact you, uh, uh, the state just is doing what the market will bear basically to try and get some leadership here? It, it could. I mean I, mm -hmm. I, it's hard to say. I think uh, with many things in New Mexico we can't always compare ourselves to a, a national trend. You know? That's a good point. Um, mm -hmm. Like what Tom said is, is NMSU is kind of a unique university and um, I'm not sure that we can fairly say everyone else is doing it so we're going to do it this way. Mm -hmm. I want to read you a quote. This is from Regent, uh, NMSU Regent Chairwoman Deborah Hicks. Quote, Chancellor Arvizu and President Flores will be required to significantly re increase our research footprint, adding revenues while building a brand proposition and student experience that will drive recruitment and retention of students. That's, that's an interesting quote. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what a brand, maybe Tom knows a brand proposition for a university is, <laughs> but that's an odd way to put these kind of things. That's a tall it order. It should be about education. Right, exactly. <laughs> you know, it exactly. should be about education. <laughs> now we're branding. Let's take, let's take the first bit, though, the re increasing the research footprint. This is a, a serious thing for state sure. because they only are doing about 100 to 140 million in research grant revenue right now. That's not a whole lot for research universities. So these folks are expected to really increase that footprint. That's a difficult task. Well, and the question is, mm -hmm. does it, is it, is the chancellor and the president the only figures that are uh, responsible for uh, raising funds, or mm -hmm. is it actually the departments? Uh, and I know at UNM, it's the specialists right. in certain areas that do play a role in getting those grant monies. Mm -hmm. So here, um, the, the rank and file, the people that are actually doing the research and doing the teaching, once mm -hmm. again, have been dissed mm -hmm. uh, in favor of the higher-ups um, that, you know, frankly, I think this is more than a launch pro a problem. I think that this is a land-grant rural university, mm -hmm. and the idea that, you know, the leadership is getting more than the University of New Mexico um, uh, twice as well, over twice That's as right. much That's right. uh, as uh, President uh, Stokes, mm -hmm. and uh, they are, um, you know, they are perhaps in line with national uh, national statistics. Mm -hmm. But we've gotten in trouble by going with the na national out of state uh, choices That's in right. the past. Mm -hmm. And I, I fear that this may be no different. You know, Carolyn, when you think about it, Didi makes a good point. State's uh, annual budget's $800 million. 
uh, UNM says three billion, <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you need two people to run 800 million, one person to run three billion, something's not quite odd, just some, right there. But my question is, is there a, a way to do a bottom line when you have two people at the top? Meaning in a lot of situations at a university, it's not about funding games and great announcements about great things, it's about managing real problems. And you know, the idea that, that there's no one person that's the bottom line person. Perhaps we consider the president that person, but when you hire two at the same time, it doesn't feel quite that way, does it? It doesn't feel like there's not that one person in charge. Right, where the buck stops. Right, exactly. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah it's a huge gamble on mm -hmm. part of the university. You know, it's a little bit like a Hail Mary pass, right. really. Right. And yeah. something more you would see out of a big corporation, you mm -hmm. know. Yeah. Um, so it'd be interesting. Kind of a libertarian type attitude right. was, was one of my first thoughts was, hmm. So, mm -hmm. um, Hopefully they'll delineate their responsibilities so right. it's clear. You know well, what I mean? Well, that's the problem. As I, they I, get I, into right, it. Right, exactly. You know? yeah. But we'll see. I mean, it, it could work. Right. I mean, it works for big corporations, right? Sometimes. 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 <laughs> Let me stay with you on this one as well. The idea that uh, Tom mentioned earlier that faculty, mm -hmm. uh, legislature passed that 2% raise. That has not exactly been a pass-through at state directly to the teaching mm -hmm. ranks. And there's some rumbling now that, wait a minute, we have the set aside money as the, uh, you know, the state yeah. saying to pay for these new salaries, but there's no set aside money for our raises. You know what I mean? There's, yeah. there's an odd thing going on that that could well, that's end very up being. Wrong. Yeah, and I yeah. agree with Didi. You know, we can attract students for that first year, but it's going to be the quality of the teaching that keeps them. Mm -hmm. so, exactly right. Yeah. So yeah. Twenty-two percent enrollment decline in recent years. That's a lot that's of a students. Lot. And any 1% cost the university $1 million out of their pocket, any 1% drop. You see where these folks are coming from. There's, there's a time to panic, there's a time to do something. So I guess the idea again is, th is this two-headed monster the right way to do it? We don't know, but you know, going in, we should maybe give them a little credit for trying something different perhaps? Sure, I, yeah. um, I, I guess try anything, you know, and, and mm -hmm. talking about the, the national trend, you could argue, uh, how you can be competitive when you're trying to get, and there's also the argument, maybe we should bring people from in-state. There's all these things right. going in yeah. there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's also worth considering that, you know, programs in the school that you can't get anywhere else, uh, you know, yeah. think outside yes. the box, that's hire right. teachers that will that's teach right. these programs that do something else. I don't know. That's what draws people to schools, in, in my opinion, is, is the programs that's there right. and not necessarily who's running the that, college. That's, so. that's a very good point there, exactly. And, and mm -hmm. I think the declining enrollment problem is across the board. Yes. And it's not just an MSU. And it's a partially demographically driven. Mm -hmm. um, and so there has to be a, there, I agree with Andy. I think that there has to be a new approach, uh, in, it, rather than just increasing total enrollment mm -hmm. or trying to make up for past deficit, specializing in certain fields. That's right. That's One right. of the things that Please. MSU did uh, mm -hmm. that UNM doesn't have is actually a brewing program. You know, yeah. oh, so yeah. you're getting young college students That's learning right. about you know the science of brewing beer, um, just things like that to think outside the you know uh, jobs are changing. Um, people might be interested in doing other things besides mm -hmm. just regular agriculture. That's right, that's a good point there. Uh, you know, Tom, interestingly, when you think about it's a competitive environment mm -hmm. where, where state dwells, you know, Texas Tech, there's a lot of regional schools around here who are thriving, they're actually doing well, they're actually increasing their mm -hmm. student enrollment. I guess since 2013 we've had a 22% drop at state, something's not quite clicking there if other similar universities or, or increasing, and we're not. So. Yeah, over those last several years, there's been tremendous amount of conflict down the southern part of the state with regards to management of, uh, mm -hmm. un of specifically New Mexico State University. There's mm -hmm. been a lot of conflict with the Doniana Community College, uh, and mm -hmm. you know, there's just there's just conflict, conflict, conflict. You know, the New Mexico State is without a major uh, athletic conference, That's and right while educators might not really, or faculty may not go, okay, fine, we get, we don't have to worry about that. Mm -hmm. That provides a lot of uh, cachet for a right. particular program. Right. What New Mexico State really needs to do right now is find a way to leverage its relevance. In agriculture, they have to make it fun again. Mm -hmm. uh, they mm -hmm. also have to be able to uh, leverage some of the things that they're, that they're known for, but nobody really knows they're known for, like uh, the usability programs. Right. Uh, you know, Silicon Valley loves to hire folks from the computer programs and computer degrees from New Mexico State because they're very successful at the usability platforms. Mm -hmm. And that's something that they don't really promote. 
Interesting point there. When we get out of this, I want to thank Gov Governor Carruthers for his service at NMSU, of course. He did a great job down there. Now, later when we come back to the line, we'll look at how a judge's rule that the UNM Foundation is subject to public records laws is making transparency advocates happy. But coming up next, I sit down with leaders of an upcoming flamenco festival in Albuquerque to talk about the economic and cultural impacts of the international event and how it got started.